Hello my friends, welcome back to Keto in the Chaos. My name is Tammy and on this channel I like to share all my tips and tricks on how I lost 200 pounds without bariatric surgery and how you can be successful on your own weight loss journey. So if that's what you're looking for, don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring the bell for more videos like this one to inspire you to get started. Top three tips. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm so excited to be talking today about my seven month tummy tuck update. Share you all the nitty gritty of what has been going on with the doctor and with the uh, possible hernia issue and just show you my scar because it is looking pretty great. But first, before we get started, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, Perfect Keto. They are going to be having an awesome sale starting today, Monday, February 21st, 2022, all the way till March 7th? Yeah, March 7th, 2022. They are going to have a huge sale across Perfect Keto. So the sale this time is two items for 15% off, three items for 20% off, four items for 25% off, and five plus items for 35% off. So now's your time to stock up on all your Perfect Keto Whey Protein, your collagen powder, MCT powder, which is great for putting in coffee as a creamer that doesn't have as much fat as using straight MCT oil, and all kinds of other awesome things that Perfect Keto carries. Speaking of which, I have a new one I wanna share with you guys. They are launching a brand new product, and it is a cereal. So if you are like me, you really miss those days of milk and cereal back in the day when we were able to eat all the carbs and not get fat, right? Oh wait, that was never me. <laughs> but anyway, I do miss having me some good Honey Nut Crunch. And honestly, when they told me they were coming out with this cereal, I was so excited because I love me a good keto cereal. I've tried pretty much every kind that is out there. Um, I love them all for different reasons. My favorite that I eat most often is probably Wonderworks from Walmart. It's just a Walmart. But this one is really, really exciting. So first I'm gonna show you the bag and you'll see I already have opened it. Cause I cannot wait to try this. I've been so excited and I've never tried it. I'm gonna try it right here on camera for you. So two net carbs per serving, one gram sugar. Um, the protein is nine per serving and the fats are only six, which you know I'm more of a higher protein girl. Maybe for you perfect ketoers out there, you won't like the fat protein ratio, but me, I love it. Um, carbohydrates are 17 minus four fiber and 11 sugar alcohol, making them two. So I think that's pretty great. Great macros, 100 calories per serving. So let me show you guys what a serving is. A serving is actually bigger than most of the other keto cereals I have tried. Most of the other ones have a 28 or one ounce serving. You can see in my little bowl here, whew, if I don't dump it out, it's 40 grams of cereal. So it's not a huge amount. Um, if you wanna be super satisfied and have a nice big old bowl, you're probably gonna have to have two servings. Today, I'm just gonna have one serving and I'm nervous because, I don't know, the shape of it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of like dog food or something. You can see, it's kinda cute, I don't know. I wish they would've done it like an O shape or flake shape because this is honey nut. So like a honey nut Cheerio or even like a, one of those flakes with the almonds and it might've been fun but they chose to do little round things, so I'm not criticizing Perfect Keto. They can do what they want, it's their product. So I'm about to try it for the first time right now. Wow, the flavor is awesome. The crunch is a little bit too much. I think with milk, it'll be better. It tastes like when you make a cookie with, you put that um, like brown sugar erythritol in it. I don't know, I mean, I can kind of taste the erythritol, but that's pretty common with a lot of keto things. In fact, compared to cereal school, I taste the after effects of sugar alcohol a lot less with this one than I do cereal school, but I eat cereal school a lot, you've seen me, and so this is kind of a fun flavor that cereal school does not have. This is a harder texture than cereal school. It's not as puffy, so it's not like a, like a Kix, 
It's definitely kind of reminiscent of a brand. It's actually kind of reminiscent of my favorite old cereal from when I was little and my grandma used to eat it and I used to have it when I would stay over with her, with her, stay over at her house, Cracklin Oat Bran. I miss Cracklin Oat Bran. Do you know how many calories Cracklin Oat Bran has? It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot, I tell you. So this is kind of fun. So what I do for cereal, I'm gonna do right now, and then I'll pause you guys and go and eat it and then come back. Um, I like to add a Premier Protein Shake as my milk. This will give you more, more protein, it's sweeter, so it'll sweeten up a cereal, though this one is pretty sweet, doesn't really need it. And it's just gonna make more protein for your cereal punch. So whenever I eat any kinds of cereal as a cereal, instead of just in, as a snack, I always add Premier Protein as milk which is awesome. So I'm gonna try it like that, and then I'm gonna go eat this and be right back. The only thing that's weird about the Premier Protein Shake as a, as a milk is because it's kind of thick, so you have to convince yourself that that's not an issue. It's a texture thing, but I love it. I do it all the time. Think of it as creamy melted ice cream with cereal chunks. You can probably hear the crunch from over there. I have some serious crunch. Okay guys, I have to admit, this is really good. I think I'm gonna eat this a lot. All right, I'll be back in a sec. All righty guys, I ate that whole bowl of cereal. It was delicious, I feel energized. I don't know, it was fun. And I fixed my lipstick, so I know that someone is gonna ask. <laughs> so I thought I will show you guys what I have. So all over the lip, I am wearing this ColourPop Lippy Pencil in Little One. Over the top of that, in the center of my lips, I am wearing this Rimmel Scandalize Eyeshadow Pencil in Nude. And over the top of that, I am wearing ColourPop Luxe Lip Oil in Emperor. This stuff is delicious. All right, so moving on to the next thing. This is not a beauty channel. I keep reminding myself that, but people always ask me. <laughs> so I always say, ah, oh, the scar, the muscle repair. Ah, uh, here we go. All right, so seven months in. Let's just start with a lowdown of how things are going for me, how I'm feeling, and that. And then we will move into the, I don't even know what to call it. It's not really exciting. It's not really horrifying. It's not really wonderful part of the video. So hang in there with me and we will get there. So right now, seven months post-op, pretty much everything is back to normal. Um, if nothing hurts except for that one specific spot, my scar's looking so great, I feel like a normal person. My skin looks, to me, normal. It, maybe it's not normal to other people, but it's like my body is now me, and I'm used to it, and it doesn't feel foreign anymore. I don't know if, about you guys, but if you've had plastic surgery, you would probably understand the feeling that your body is foreign to you. There was a, quite a while there, right after my surgery, where I was really nervous because I thought my body was never gonna feel like me again. And I have to say, seven months out, I definitely feel normal. I just am used to a new self, a new normal. Um, I don't have all the feeling back, but I have a lot of it back. So I have a lot less numbness than I thought I would have. And as you guys saw probably in last week's video, I did like a 360 from before and after um, my, my 15 week cut, you can see how much the swelling has gone down and I'm just looking a lot more trim and feeling a lot better. That all being said, this weird little pain that just won't go away is starting to become the bane of my existence. I took two weeks off of dance classes and I thought that it was gonna help. I thought that things were getting better and that I wasn't gonna have to go back to the doctor and say, hey doc, this is still weird pain. But then I went to a dance class and was in horrible pain the next day and it has basically stayed the same or got progressively worse depending on the day, not really getting much improvement. In fact, some nights if I eat too much food at one sitting, which we're not even talking like a large amount of food. For example, six wings 
a salad with ranch and maybe a built bar or two too much food and it will hurt really really bad and sometimes feel like stabbing pain i don't know why eating triggers it i don't know if eating if it has something to do with my actual digestion or if eating just pushes on it on the area that is uncomfortable but i'll tell you what eating is what makes it the most painful out of everything even more than exercise exercise also does bother it though i have to admit um if i'm careful and i don't do anything to really strain my stomach so i don't do any more ab exercises and i try to be careful when i'm doing the um, squats that i don't do the one-legged or the lifting kind of ones that seems to be to be what triggered the last bout of really bad pain so as long as i don't do that i'm able to do the dancing just fine the clogging just fine so i don't think i'm gonna have to quit at this point we will of course see there was one point in this video where I thought that I was and I was in tears. Well, this last week anyway, I, th I was sad because I thought it was my last class anyway. So I did go back to the doctor and I talked to him about the situation and he felt it again. Well, why do I tell you the story when I can just show you? Let's go to the vlog footage. All right, so I'm heading into my plastic surgeon's office to have my, um, muscle repair looked at today. I don't know what he's gonna do. I don't know what his plan will be. I kind of hope it will be a plan of action. I'm kind of at this point going, you know, like we need to deal with this situation or at least look to see what's going on to see if it's something that needs to be fixed right away or if I can just wait. Either way, I've pretty much resigned myself to the fact that I'm probably not gonna be able to be in the dance recital this year. Um, yesterday may have been my last class. I was kind of crying, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. Maybe I'll be able to do it, but either way, I just hope I get some answers today because I really need answers. I'm kind of frustrated with the whole situation. The nurse mentioned that you have still that pain on the right side. It's worse and it's different. Really? Yeah. Tell me about it. Okay, so when I first talked to you, mm -hmm. it was like about this much above my belly button, right? Mm -hmm. That little space. And it was like a burning pain whenever I would do exercise and sometimes it would last like the next day or when I would eat. Mm -hmm. Now, it's like a sharp stabby pain and it goes across uh -huh. to here okay. in about an inch. <laughs> I don't know, like, it's driving me crazy. Do you feel like there's a lump in there? Oh, yeah. I just feel like... Definitely. So, right here, but if I tighten my muscles, you can mm -hmm. really feel the difference between the two sides. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it goes out about right there, yep. Okay, relax. Is that tender when I push? I'm not really when you push on it. It depends on the day, too, though. Like if I, I haven't eaten anything yet, mm -hmm. so I don't know. And I'm not eating an absurd amount of food. I'm talking like nine chicken wings, a salad, and a bill bar. Yeah. And then I'm in horrible pain. Yeah. And so I just don't know, like if you want to look and see if there's anything that, there's, that we need to fix or... Mm -hmm. I don't so, know. so there's a part of me that feels like that little bit of a lump that you have might be a hernia from the inside. That can happen. If that is the case, then you can't fix it. Or can no, I can. Um, the question is how to make the diagnosis on that. Right. So the best way would be with a CAT scan. Okay. The second best way would be an ultrasound. So we could get either one of those. Well, I'm fine with doing either one. I don't know if the insurance will cover it, but I mean. Well, they should if we feel like it's hernia, because we could claim it's not necessarily related to surgery. It was something that pre-existed and we just didn't, just didn't pick it up. Yeah. So let's go with the ultrasound first. Okay. And just see what we can find. So I'll write an order for that. Let's see what it shows. Where do you live? By you, basically by here. We're on the west side of the rich area. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we live in a really crappy house in a very rich neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we paid three hundred thousand for my house. Oh. Well, on an acre. Yeah, that, that I don't know do how anything. we do that. Yeah. One of these days we'll get a house loan on it or something. Use it for making it look nice. Well, so let me um, get that prescription for you so that we can get that underway. Okay. And you can get that straight across the street if you want to. All right. All right. 
we'll talk after that. <laughs> All right, so um, just they'll send the report to me. Right. But just give me a heads up, because if I don't see a report, then I can call them if I know you've had it done. Yeah, well, and it should show me in my, like, my IHC app, right? Like, it'll say you have a test result available. Okay, so we'll start with ultrasound and then go from there. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'll be back. All right. So, you saw what he said. He said he we could do a CT or an ultrasound. He gave me a prescription for an ultrasound. I kind of wish we'd just gone the CT route. I probably should have said something, but I didn't think about it until later. I'm like, oh, maybe we should just gone the way that's easiest or the most likely to see. But he thinks based on feeling my belly and me tightening and loosening my muscles that I have an intra-abdominal, I don't know if that's how you would say it, but basically a hernia under the muscle. So he doesn't think the muscle repair has failed. He thinks I'm suffering from a hernia underneath which would mean for the repair undoing, I would assume, the muscle repair, fixing it, and then putting me back together, which means, I'm guessing, a whole other recovery. So I'm actually currently on hold with the ultrasound department to schedule my appointment. Wish me luck. So he told me I could go whatever okay. to whatever radiology I want, basically. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's see here. Um, just be sure to bring that paper order with you to the appointment. Okay. Ultrasound. It just says Ultrasound. abdominal ultrasound, um, DX, dot, dot, right side, and pain, and mass. Yay. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> and then is there a specific Intermountain Hospital that you like to get it scheduled at? I guess whichever one could get me in the fastest, because I'm kind of worried about it. Then, are there specific days or times that are good or just the next available? I can pretty much make anything work. It looks like for prep, they say nothing by mouth for a minimum of eight hours prior to your appointment. All right, it's the next morning. I am up early and I am leaving for my ultrasound. It's in 45 minutes. I'm going to get there early so that I can fill out paperwork. It's about a 20-minute drive away. Um... I'm hoping that I'll be able to find out some answers, but I'm guessing they won't tell me anything. Probably that just do the ultrasound and tell me that I'll, they'll be contacting me after a technician or x-ray person or something takes a look at it. I don't know. Uh, anyway, I'll keep you guys updated and I don't think they'll let me film or anything either. So I'll just have to tell you what happens, I guess. They didn't tell me anything, of course. So she did, she started doing ultrasound of the area and I told her that also I've been having pain and swelling since the very beginning. 
at the bottom right, which the doctor didn't seem to be concerned about, but I have been concerned about from the beginning. I had a small seroma there and he drained it there way back in the day at the beginning. Anyway, at first she was like, I'm not going to check that because that's not what he wanted. And then she was like, hmm, actually, I'm going to check that. So I know she checked down there. I don't know if she found anything. Um, she checked pretty th thoroughly and then told me that she was going to go talk to my doctor. And she thought that maybe I would have to have a CT. And I'm like, okay, why didn't we just do a CT to begin with? I don't know. I should have said something like that. I should have just insisted on CT since it would make more sense, like, to me, but. She talked to him loudly in the hallway. I could hear her talking, but I couldn't tell what she was saying. So that was frustrating because I kind of wanted to hear what she was saying to him. But anyway, then she came back in and she said she had to check one more thing. She put the ultrasound on me and like took measurements. So I'm guessing there's some sort of something in there. Maybe it's just freestanding fluid. Maybe it's like a weird seroma and all I need is some like water pills or something to get this dang water off of me. Maybe that's all it is. Maybe it's not even a hernia. She, she didn't say. Anyway, she did say that the doctor will get the results today and that he should contact me by Friday. That's in two days. If he hasn't contacted me by Friday, I needed to call him. So if he hasn't contacted me probably by tomorrow, I'm going to text him and be like, hello, you know, I'm in a hurry here, right? Because it's competition season and dance picture season and I'm freaking out. It's fine. Anyway, that's the update for today. Let you guys know as soon as I know anything important. Okay, so that was exciting. So you saw that I went to my ultrasound appointment and they told me literally nothing, <laughs> nothing. So later that day, I actually got the report from the like ultrasound radiology person. And it basically said that they were unable to find any hernia or cyst in the ultrasound footage or pictures or I don't know. Because my doctor is not an ultrasound tech, so he would probably not even know how to read it if he tried. Um, but yeah, they, they uh, had the ultrasound tech look at it and they said that they didn't see anything. So I was told that my doctor would get back to me within two days. So I waited the two days, but then it was the weekend. So I waited over the weekend and I was like, he still hasn't messaged me. <laughs> Then I got busy. I can't even remember what day I finally messaged him. I think it was Wednesday night. So like a full week later, I finally messaged him and said, you know, like, do we have any next steps? Should I be worried? And he was like, oh no, I'll read it tomorrow and I'll message you or call you. And he, so he didn't, I think, what day? No, I called, oh my heck, I can't even remember anymore. I can't even remember. He didn't call me back. So whatever day it was, he didn't call me. So I had to message him again. You know, I understand this problem because as a woman with an ADHD brain, sometimes if I don't put things in here, baby, yeah, it doesn't happen. It didn't ever exist. It doesn't exist. And I know he probably has his schedule and he has his surgeries and he has his appointments and he just goes through his day and he doesn't think about the extra stuff that are outside of that. So I don't blame him, but I did kind of have to get after him to get him to call me back. He finally did. And what he said was, well, that didn't really tell us anything, did it? And I was like, dude, you're killing me right now. You're killing me. So yeah, that's where we're at with that. Then he proceeds to tell me, well, you know, in all my years as a plastic surgeon um, and all of my years as a general surgeon before that, I've never seen a spigelian hernia, but I think this could possibly be your issue. And I'm like, okay. So he still thinks it's a hernia, but he thinks it's this like, super rare, like really never happens kind of hernia that happens. Well, I'm gonna Google it because I don't think I can remember enough to explain the situation. It is a hernia through the spigelian fascia or the layer of tissue that separates two groups of abdominal muscles. The muscles are called the rectus muscles and the lateral obliques. This type of hernia is also sometimes called a lateral ventral hernia. That's exactly where I have my pain. 
literally like right between, like right next to my belly button, like right where he sucked my rectus muscle up to the whatever obliques, I don't know. It's under there. So it starts around my belly button and it goes that way towards the obliques. Unless I'm wrong, I don't even know what an oblique is. It's the side, right? Tell me if I'm wrong, I'm probably wrong. But it doesn't matter because that's where it hurts and that's what he thinks it is. And he's like, it's extremely rare. I've never seen this in my entire life. I don't even know anybody who's seen this in their entire life. Leave it to me to be the one that gets something that no one has ever seen before. So he says to me, well, I'd like to just get in there since you already have a scar. We could just open that up and we could just see. And I'm probably going to need to do that under general anesthesia because, you know, you, if I see it, I'd like to fix it. And I can't really fix it on the table in my opera and in, in my office. <laughs> oh my God. I kind of suspected we were going to head down that road ever since he said the word hernia anyway, which is what he said at the appointment. <sighs> I asked him, could it be a seroma in that area under the muscle? Because you can feel that it's under the muscle is the problem. And he's like, no, that ultrasound would have been the way to pick that up. They would have seen it. It's not that. And I'm like, oh, darn. I was really hoping it's it was me and my weird water retention because, I don't know, you guys don't probably don't know, probably haven't mentioned on this channel much, I almost died from water retention after my ninth baby. It's part of the reason I started my weight loss journey because I was in such bad physical health after having him that I felt like I was going to die if I didn't do something, right? Right after I had him, I had so much water retention in my body that my body swelled up to the size of like the Michelin man. I was probably gained like I don't even know. I, I would imagine 40, 50 pounds. It was ridiculous, especially having seen 30 pounds of water weight gain after having my surgery. I'm guessing minimum 40, 50 pounds I put on and the water didn't have anywhere to go. And so it filled up my pleural cavity and literally gave me pleurisy. So I couldn't open my lungs, couldn't breathe. And I felt like I was drowning. I literally thought I was dying. I gave my baby to my then 14 year old daughter and just was like, here you go. He was breastfeeding. She had no way to feed him. She was like, what do I do with this? You know, like, and I was like, bye. I don't know if I'm coming back. I'm going to the ER. And it turned out that it was that when I went there and it all worked out. My sister took care of the baby and it was fine, but I was in the hospital for quite a few days. It was miserable. I had to take Lasix. I like peed off 40 pounds of water. Like it was crazy. So I do have a history of very weird swelling. So it wouldn't surprise me if I just have like a weird pocket of fluid some random place and open me up is probably like gonna cause that to happen again. Like, right? I don't know, that's where my brain goes. He doesn't, I don't think he thinks it's that. So I've gotta let that idea go. That's the problem, it's just this brain constantly thinking up, thinking up things. Anyway, all that to say, he wants me to go ahead and have a CT scan, which I have not done at the time of this recording. So I'm getting that scheduled in a couple of days and I will of course update you guys. I'm not sure if I'll do a vlog or if I will do a video or if I will even maybe do a live chat because Dave keeps trying to convince me to use my camera the way it was intended and do a live chat where I can see the computer right here and like talk to you guys because like it's been a while, like almost a year since I've done one. <laughs> But because it's been so long, my anxiety makes me makes me get nervous about doing it. And then I just panic. I just need to make it happen. I just need to do it. I know if I just do it, it'll be fine because it always is. Anyway, I'm super sad about possibly needing surgery. Probably I will be able to push it out until after all of my crazy is done unless they find something on the CT that says that it's emergent, in which case I don't know what the heck is going to happen because I have dance photos to do and dance competitions. I mean, we have eight dance competitions, two full studio shoots, and a Disneyland trip coming up in May. That will be devastating if I have to have a full surgery again. So I'm hoping, if, it may mean quitting my dance classes and taking it super easy and eating tiny meals. And I will do anything to make sure that I'm okay if that's the case, but it, hopefully we'll make it to June and then I will have a revision. Cause I told him, I'm like, dude, if you're cutting me open, you may as well get rid of the rest of the skin. Cause 
I, I don't mind it. I just don't like the idea of getting cut open again because I don't really want to start all over with this scar again after I got this far with it. But if he's got to open me up, then he dang well better remove some more skin because I'm not going to feel happy about it unless I look a little better coming out of the other side. You know what I mean? So speaking of which, my scar, the last part of this video, I'm going to show you how did it go with the Edison scar strips? Did they do any good? I hope that you enjoy seeing the updates of my scar. I've been very happy how it has improved over time and I'm excited to show you where it is at right now. So let's see that footage and I will check back in with you in just a minute. Alrighty guys, it has been another month. It is my seven month scar update. And I'm kind of disappointed because it is snowing outside. It's really dark and dingy looking in this room. And that is really stressing me out because I like to compare things across like similar lighting situations. Now you can see just as I'm talking, the sun has come out a little bit. So here's hoping that you'll be able to tell. Suffice it to say, I'll just have to tell you my personal opinion and maybe you won't be able to tell so much but i'm just gonna sit you down here so this month for scar care i have only used the edison scar strips that i talked about in the last check-in these have been great um, i do have some tips which i will go over um, in a bit but this is the only product that i have used this month for scar care I stopped using all of my other products. I stopped using my scar gel and the resurfacing gel and bio oil, everything, literally everything. I only used these. So I'm going to show you what we're looking like today. Okay, so here is the Fleur de Lis scar. It, like, it goes up here and it goes all the way down to the T here. Um, there is a scar around my belly button. I feel like there's not a lot of change with this scar, but it's, this one was doing really, really well um, beforehand. I actually took some pictures in better lighting from about a week ago, and I'm just gonna show you the side-by-side -side of, of that right here. So yeah, in my opinion, I didn't see a lot of change in this particular scar, but it is still looking really, really good for seven months out. I feel like you can't see it so far, so well from far away. Like when I do my like, um, my videos every month, I feel like it look, just looks like the line of my abs. It doesn't really look like a big crazy scar, which I really thought would happen. Um, I do have to apologize. I'm extra swollen today. I literally had stomach flu and I don't know what it did to my stomach, but it's just like, everything is just, but it is what it is and you can still see my scar. So <laughs> there you go. Um, I'm going to show you the T scar and the across the hip area. All right. I actually saw a lot of improvement in this scar. So especially right here, the redness in this area in particular really seemed to go down. And right here, it's just like, oh, where's the scar? I can't even see it, right? Like, it's gone. Okay, this is where it is, I guess. I can't even see it there for a second. I couldn't figure out where the line was. That is awesome. The drain hole scars, like, practically disappeared with the tape in four days. I saw an immediate um, difference in this in the very first week, which is awesome. Um, across the back, I don't have as much change in my opinion. Um, part of the problem was that it was really hard to keep the tapes on this area. I was able to keep the tape on like say this area right here and it does seem to be a little bit lighter. On this hip, literally it's like the drain hole scars are like gone. Like this one you can kind of still see a little bit. The top one is gone. It was already gone. I couldn't even figure out where to stick the tape on that one because it's like I can't find it. I don't know where it is, but I would assume it's somewhere in this area, but I cannot tell. But this one is going away quite a bit and this hip area has gone away quite a bit. So I'm going to stop here to put in the pictures that I took a week ago and let you guys see um, before and after difference. 
Okay, and as far as the thigh scars, those are the ones that will make it the most improvement. And honestly, I can't really tell if there's a lot of improvement. Um, they do seem like flatter and they're not as purple. Um, this one is really not as purple to me as it was last month. Um, it's still kind of raised right here and at the bottom. And it was hard to keep the tape at the bottom. Um, it, like at the edges, like it didn't stick down as much. And so I feel like it's darker at the bottom than it was on the places where the tape actually would stick. But all in all, it's not the worst. Uh, to me, this one looks about the same, but honestly, it's so hard to tell. I tried really hard to keep the tapes on these because I really wanted to see some improvement. And I feel like I do see some improvement in the upper area, but down here, maybe not as much as I'd like to see. I definitely see dark. It's dark down here and the tape mostly stuck here. So I'm guessing there's improvement. But yeah, here they are from far away. Like I said, you can't hardly see them. I don't know if anyone else would be able to like see them if I was like, even if I was in like a teeny little bikini, like if I cover up right here, you can't see those at all. And this one, I feel like just looks like part of my abs. So I don't feel like they look that bad for seven months out. And that is part of the reason that I haven't wanted to do a revision, even though I, you, it's obvious I have this loose skin here um, and the pain from the hernia thing or whatever they're calling it is in this area as well. Um, I definitely have quite a bit of loose skin that could, they could take off in a revision if I wanted to, but I just... I don't care. <laughs> I feel like it looks just like natural, like a mom. I feel like I look sexy and pretty. I'm not that worried about that. So yeah, that's where I am with my scar today. Um, some tips on the Edison scar strips. Um, at first I was taking them off every day and sticking them on my tub and then putting them on in the morning. They lasted about five days. I don't even know. Like it didn't seem like they lasted very long before they wouldn't stick. I don't think what they say that they're washable, that they mean you can wash them and they'll stick better because I did attempt that and it did not work. I think what they mean by washable is that you can put them on and leave them and wash your body. So that's what I tried next. They last a lot longer that way. Um, I took them off after six days because I needed them off when I do my 360. But I think they would have stayed a lot longer and a lot better if I was able to just leave them on for as long as possible. They did rip up on the edges, like I said, on the thighs. And even if I used a two inch strip on my back, they lasted a lot longer on a two inch strip um, or like a full strip basically on my back scar. They didn't stay with my pants going up and down because I would forget they were there and it would grab my, pull them off. So if you're just having a tummy tuck, it's not gonna be as much of an issue. The tummy ones stayed on just fine. like totally fine. So I did end up having to buy a couple more boxes of these. You can hear this one is full. That is because the last week I haven't been able to wear the strips. I only actually wore them for three weeks because of the whole thing with wondering if I had a hernia and going to get ultrasound, seeing the doctor and all of that. I ended up having to leave them off this whole last week just because I had all those visits. I do see a lot of improvement, but my scars are already so good. I don't know that I would want to invest. Maybe if I was having real big trouble with my scar and I was really worried, or maybe on my thighs, I might just continue on those only. But the inconvenience of having to worry about the, the strips catching on my clothes and things like that, at this point, seven months out with my scar looking this good, I just don't see the benefit. But maybe if, like I said, I was having a more difficult looking scar or I was earlier in the process, maybe I would have a better looking scar at this point if I had started it earlier and not been lazy. So um, the link is in the about section if you want to buy these. Um, this visit video is not sponsored today, but I did tell them that I would tell you how they went. And be honest, I feel like it's worth it. They're a good price. Like I said, I didn't feel like I went broke buying them, but technically compared to what I was doing before the bio oil and the Aven, these lasted longer, though maybe didn't work as well. Um, they were a little bit more cost affordable than the strips, but that's where I am with the strips. Hope this helps. If you're gonna use them, I hope that you'll keep them on and just like take showers and leave them on as long as you can, because I think they work better that way. I'm not a strips connoisseur or expert so not 100% sure on that but 
that's my advice. Hope it helps. All right, well there you have it. My beautiful scar that may end up getting cut wide open again. <laughs> I do not do not want to do it. I Like I said before, I don't mind that looseness on my belly. I think it looks pretty. I don't have a problem with it. I know a lot of people do when they, when, especially, you know, when you are you start to get some of that water weight off and you find that you're not as tight as you thought you were. It's kind of hard to get used to at first, but I think it looks fine. I think it looks pretty and I think it just looks like I'm a mom and I just don't look like a mom who got gigantic and stretched everything out. I just look like a regular mom who's just soft and pretty. So it doesn't bother me. But like I said, if he's gonna go in, he may as well a little bit more, cause why not? So I will keep you guys updated on that and hopefully have an update on the CT scan relatively soon. Honestly, don't know when that's gonna be. But thanks for your curiosity and thanks for hanging out with me for these fun videos. This has been a crazy roller coaster ride. If you are curious to see all the videos about the surgery, they are all in a playlist. I will link the playlist at the end of this video. So if you wanna just click through and watch all of the things I did to get ready and have my surgery and all of the recovery. If you haven't seen those yet, they're really fun and I hope that you will enjoy watching those. Um, if you're just new here, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell so that you can be notifi notified when I post another video and don't forget to check out all the information in the about section. I have all the information about my surgeon and how much it costs and of course all of the ways you can support the channel and help keep things running around here and I appreciate all of your support. So I will talk to you all again soon. Mm -hmm.